Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I've got an interesting video for you today. We are going to talk about a license plate. Yes, a license plate. But not just any old license plate. We are going to talk about a brand new license plate that surprisingly is a bit controversial and it's making some people upset. So this is a newly issued Pennsylvania license plate available for passenger cars and trucks and it features a flower and several insects. So why on earth is this license plate making people upset? Well, as you know, the Learn Your Land channel doesn't really talk about automobiles too often, but we do talk about nature and ecology. And the controversy with this license plate has everything to do with a particular topic that's pretty hot right now in ecological circles, and that topic is native versus non-native species. The biggest complaint that people have regarding this new license plate is that it features a flower that's not native to Pennsylvania. And that flower is purple coneflower Echinacea purpurea. Purple coneflower, according to some people, is a really poor choice for a Pennsylvania license plate because it sends the wrong message. Our state flower should be on the plate, people say. Or any other flower that's native to Pennsylvania, but not an introduced plant like purple coneflower. Now, I have a few thoughts on the issue, and I'd like to share them with you today. And I'll start out by saying that if a nature-themed license plate is capable of making a person upset, then I wonder about that person's relationship with meaningful challenges in life. Having said that, nowhere on the license plate does it say anything about native species. The point of the license plate, according to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, or PennDOT, is to generate money for the Pollinator Habitat Program Fund, which helps to reinvigorate the populations of insects which pollinate plant life. Yes, native plants support pollinators, but the truth is, many non-native plants do too. Now, we are making assumptions here, and we're assuming that the flower depicted on the license plate is actually purple coneflower, Echinacea purpurea. Obviously, the flower on the plate is a coneflower in the Echinacea genus, but nowhere on PennDOT's website does it state what species of Echinacea this is. It could be another coneflower, perhaps one that is undoubtedly native to Pennsylvania, and that species is smooth purple coneflower, Echinacea levigata. Now, smooth purple coneflower no longer grows wildly in Pennsylvania because it has been extirpated or removed from the state, but the species still grows elsewhere in the U.S., if the image does depict smooth purple coneflower, then no one really has to be upset because smooth purple coneflower is technically a native Pennsylvania species. But let's assume that the flower on the plate is purple coneflower Echinacea purpurea. The intention of the license plate is to generate funds for pollinator habitats. And wouldn't you know it, purple coneflower is undoubtedly a fantastic plant for pollinators. A variety of insects, including bumblebees, honeybees, long-tongued bees, bee flies, and butterflies, love spending time on and around purple coneflower. We are also assuming that Echinacea purpurea is not native to Pennsylvania. According to the USDA plants database, this species is native to Pennsylvania. But some people don't like using this database to determine what's native and what's not. Some people like using another resource called BonApp, or the Biota of North America program. When we consult BonApp, we see that Echinacea purpurea is native to the United States, but it's not native to Pennsylvania. It's adventive, meaning it has been introduced into Pennsylvania, but it's not well established on its own yet. Okay, so BonApp does not consider purple coneflower to be native to Pennsylvania but the plant is native to counties pretty close to Pennsylvania. According to Bonap, purple coneflower is native to this county right here, Carroll County, which is located only 23 miles from the border of Western Pennsylvania. And if we head north to this county in Ohio, Lake County, where purple coneflower is also native, then the border of Western Pennsylvania is just a few more miles away, 27.7 miles to be exact. What this means is that if the western border of Pennsylvania was shifted only 30 miles west when it was politically established in the late 1700s, then no person today would be complaining about this license plate. But let's forget about political boundaries for just a second because a political boundary is just one kind of boundary. There are other boundaries that we could recognize like physiographic boundaries. The eastern Ohio counties where purple coneflower grows are located within physiographic provinces that extend into Pennsylvania. Physiographic provinces are geographic regions with distinct physical features and landforms. 
Carroll County is located in a physiographic province called the Appalachian Plateau. Lake County is located in two physiographic provinces, the Appalachian Plateau and the Central Lowland. Both of these physiographic provinces extend into Pennsylvania. Now I get it, these physiographic provinces are large and they encompass a lot of land, much more land than a single state does. So it's not always useful to base the native status of a plant on its physiographic province, but it is useful to understand that other boundaries besides state boundaries exist. And when we observe these other boundaries, then our concepts and ideas, and perhaps even fears of what's native and what's not, change. But let's obey the political boundaries for now and let's accept the current dividing lines between the states today. I don't think it would be too extreme to suggest that if we go back far enough in time, purple coneflower could be native to what is now Pennsylvania, but over time it became extirpated or removed from the state. Let me explain my reasoning. When we talk about the native status of a particular species, we do so within the context of time and space. We already talked about space. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Appalachian Plateau, Central Lowland. But what about time? What year do we unanimously recognize as the cutoff year for a particular species to be considered native? Is it 1492? Or could it be further back in time? Interestingly, there is no general consensus on this issue. The reason I am tossing out the idea that purple coneflower could have once grown naturally in what is now Pennsylvania is that prairie plants in North America and purple coneflower is a prairie plant, migrated east during a warming period that took place approximately 5,000 years ago. This is why a plant like prairie smoke, a member of the rose family that grows in prairies and open woodlands in the western and midwestern portions of the continent, also grows in a few isolated pockets in eastern habitats, for example, in upstate New York. Prairie smoke migrated east when the climate changed. The current populations of prairie smoke that are now found in eastern habitats became isolated from their core prairie populations when the climate became cooler and wetter. When we consider purple coneflower, I don't think it's unreasonable to suggest that it too could have extended its range eastward into what is now Pennsylvania thousands of years ago when the climate warmed but it contracted its range and disappeared from Pennsylvania when conditions became cooler and wetter. If something like that did happen, then the status of Echinacea purpurea would be similar to the status we reserve for Echinacea levigata, native to Pennsylvania, but extirpated. Lastly, I should probably address the honeybee on the license plate because if we are talking about native species, well, the honeybee isn't native to Pennsylvania. In fact, it's not native to the United States. All I'll say is that honeybees are fantastic pollinators and if we like honey, if we eat honey, if we eat any of the dozens of food plants that are pollinated by honeybees, apples, almonds, broccoli, melons, squash, and others, then we should probably express our deepest gratitude for honeybees and not condemn them. So I think that's all I got on the license plate issue. So I think I'll stop here and I'll ask you, what do you think? Is this license plate worth getting upset over? Is purple coneflower a poor choice? for a Pennsylvania license plate that was designed to raise funds for pollinator habitats. If you've got any thoughts, questions, concerns, general pains, the comment section is a good place to leave them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed watching it, please subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. And if you want to stay in touch, I encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video. Thank you.